Hey guys, this is Gaurav. Welcome to SaaS with ServiceNow. This is my third video for ServiceNow developer training. In this video, we will talk about server-side scripting. In my previous video, we learned about what is client-side scripting. So there are two kind of scripting in ServiceNow. One is client-side scripting, another one is server-side scripting. In this video, we will talk about server-side scripting. Before we start, let me give you a quick introduction about myself. My name is Gaurav Tripathi. I have 9.5 years of experience in IT with 6.5 years of experience in ServiceNow, Architect Solutions and Project Delivery. Server-side scripting. What are we going to learn? Today, we are going to learn about what is server-side scripting, where to use server-side scripting, server-side API and methods, use cases of server-side scripting. Let's start with what is server-side scripting. Server-side scripts, they execute on server and database. Ideally, in order to perform some operations, if you get some value from the server, then you uh, use server-side scripting. If you're working on incident form and you have to fetch some data, um, which is in the database, and uh, you want to fetch a value of a record, then you can use the server-side scripting. So following are some examples which shows what is server-side scripting that where exactly you will use server-side scripting. For example, you are updating a field when record is inserted. So when you are inserting incident record or any change record or problem record and you want to update a field, that you can do with the help of server-side scripting. Setting a value on a field when parent record is updated. If you want to set a value on a field of a child, if, uh, for example, parent incident or parent record is updated. Validate the role of logged in user. So whomsoever user has logged in, what kind of role it has that you can validate with the help of server side scripting. You can generate events. So when if you want to generate some email events of service now, then you have to use server side scripting send email if you want to send notifications to any any uh, particular users or group then in that case you have to use server side scripting where to use server side scripting now as we saw there are so many places for client side scripting similarly we also have some places where you can write server side code that is server side scripting as an example, you can write uh, these server-side code on access controls, that is ACL, access control list, then business rules, script includes, transform maps, workflow. Now, these are some places. There are some other places where you can write both client-side and server-side. For that, we can, we can uh, learn later, and I will definitely post one of the video regarding where you can write both the codes. As an example, UI actions. In UI action, you can write server-side code as, as well. You can write uh, client-side code as well. Even in script include, uh, script include can be written for client-side as well. Ideally, the code will be the server-side, but it can be written for client as well and just to call any function directly from script include. We will see how exactly you can utilize script include as well. Classes of server-side. Now, these are some server-side classes which you utilize in ServiceNow. As an example, you can see on the screen, we have Glide Record, Glide Element, Glide data, Date Time, Glide Aggregate, Glide System. These are all APIs. Now, as I, as I mentioned in my previous uh, video, that ServiceNow provides a lot of classes for client-side and server-side so that you can utilize those classes and uh, just just use them classes in your code and perform the operations or maybe if you have some functionalities you can fulfill those functionalities with the help of these classes and apis we have from service now glide record now this is i would say one of the um, important 
API for server side code which you will use I, I will say almost every day if you will if you are a service node developer then you will definitely use this API for sure every time because this record is used for database operations if you want to manipulate data you have to use Glide record so anything you want to do as part of your uh, server you want to fetch some records you want to insert some records you want to uh, change some records update some records delete some records you can do it with the help of glide record in this video I will just show you a few examples of what exactly we say server-side scripting but I will definitely post another video or, or I would say uh, more videos which will talk about all these APIs even for client side even for uh, server side like glide record glide user uh, glide form all these APIs we have from service now major APIs important APIs which every developer has to use every day almost every day so uh, glide record as I mentioned on the screen that it is used only in server side syntax is create instance of glide record class so we create the instance how we create it you create the gr you create the glide record object you create a variable that is gr and you have glide record and then then you mention the table name now practically i will show you later that how exactly you utilize glide record then we have glide system glide system is used to get information about system and current logged in user it just if you want to get some information so service now has already created this class so that you can with the help of methods of these cl uh, class you can get a lot of information it is referred by a variable GS so how you use this glide system there is syntax GS dot glide system method you mention the method and if you have some parameter that's how you use glide system glide aggregate now this is also one of the important class of service now glide aggregate is used to perform aggregation operation on the database that means if you want to do any kind of a count or a sum that's how you do average you do it with the help of glide aggregate now glide aggregate and glide uh, record they both do same kind of activity as part of the database operation but in glide record you fetch the record and you can do a lot of changes but glide aggregate is just utilized in order to do some functionality some operations like count some uh, minimum maximum average that's what you can do with the help of glide aggregate it's an extension of glide record class that's really important thing to know that it is an extension of glide record class the syntax we have for glide aggregate it's quite similar with glide record as you can see on the screen we have var agg that's a variable we are creating so new glide aggregate and then we have incident and that means it's a table so in, in glide record you mention the table name in braces and same here you, you just mention the table name so this is the uh, class where you can uh, do some operations related to count some uh, average practical lab and use cases now these are not only the one which are the classes of server-side scripting there are a lot of there are multiple uh, server-side APIs provided by ServiceNow now how you can find those APIs even on ServiceNow uh, documentation there is a site called developer.servicenow.com you go to that site there's a there's a I think tab which called there's a link called API when you click on that API you, it will show you three menus one is server client and rest rest is for the web services rest web service APIs which ServiceNow is providing and the another two are uh, server and client client we have already talked about I have already pasted the uh, link of that particular uh, list of API's in my previous video I will also do the same for server side uh, API's as well now let's let's take a look for some some of the examples and use cases that how exactly you use this server side scripting 
or when exactly would you think that okay now I have to uh, create or, or write a code for server side so let's take a look this is my personal developer instance now I will show you how to write server side script so server side script as I mentioned earlier we do like a, a database operations like client record so if I go to incident or maybe uh, let me show you with the help of fix a script not directly on a table uh, in your admin you must have read fix a script now fix a script it just a I would say it's a open platform coding where uh, if you if you have some task if for example I will give you a best example that if you want to update uh, one lakh records now in order to do that you have to write a fix a script service now also provides background script where you can write the code as per you want but the recommended approach is writing a fixer script so I will just make it a test for demo now here this is the script field where we can write the script now what is a server-side code as I mentioned now if you remember we talked about different API classes of client side as well which runs on form which runs on form fields now here the, th the the code is slightly different because now we work on the directly on the server directly on the system at how exactly we can fetch the records as an example let me show you so I will start with var gr equal to new I'm creating the glide record object now you can see it says it is automatically showing that what exactly it needs as part of the parameters it's it, it needs table name so what I will do I will mention here incident and this table name is the exact table name it is not a display name it is the exact table name we have so I will put semicolon then I will do gr so as I mentioned there are a lot of methods for this glide record so we have created the glide record instance now I will access some of the methods so that I can uh, create my query to do some operations on the database so as of now I just want to fetch 10 records of incident let's see that so I will put add um, these are the methods multiple methods are there for glide record so we are using the same variable as you have created that instance so what I will do I will go for add active query now what this will do for me this will pull all the active incidents so I will semicolon then I will do gr dot query And then I will do while gr dot next. Here I can type maybe gs dot log. And the incident number is, and I will put here gr dot number if I will save this fix a script now I will show you I will I'm going to run this fix a script so if I run this fix a script and proceed great now all the active incidents are showing right here now if I want to limit the records I will do one thing I will do gr dot set limit now this is one of the method which is used for a glide record and you can read sets the maximum number of record in the glide record to be fetched in the next query so what I can do I can do set limit I just press the tab and I will put for example 5 now it will just give me five incident numbers 
I will save it again and now I will run it as you can see initially we were getting every incident which were active but now it is showing me all the active incidents but I have set the limit as 5 so now it is showing me just 5 incidents so this is a server side script that's how you do we have some other APIs as I mentioned glide aggregate glide user as well we do have glide user in client as well but here it's totally different yes we use it glide user with the help of glide system I will show you there will be a separate video for all the important APIs I'm going to post as part of this developer training I'm going to post separate videos for all the important APIs we have so that you have better understanding now in my next section I am going to talk about all these codings that how exactly we do these codings for different areas like uh, server side or client side why we why we create that variable this is basically part of the JavaScript so as I mentioned earlier that you should be aware of JavaScript as well you should be completed uh, code Academy code the code Academy course that's really important so I would definitely recommend if you're not able to understand that why I'm putting while or all these loops why I'm doing that that uh, the only reason that you're not able to understand because you have not completed or you're not aware of JavaScript yet so I would definitely recommend that you should definitely read JavaScript you should complete that code Academy course and then watch developer training so as of now I'm going to end this video this session uh, this was just all about server-side scripting that what is a server-side scripting but as I mentioned I'm going to tell you each and every API which is mostly used I will show you all the use cases I'm also going to tell you what most of the organizations come with different requirements so that as a developer how exactly you can fulfill those requirements for your customers for your clients so thanks for watching my video. Have a good day.